Welcome to the Central Wisconsin Ethics of Stem Cell Research Conference. My name is Mark Brown, and I have been a professor of philosophy at UWMC since 1986. This year, I also am an institute fellow at the Wisconsin Institute for Public Policy and Service, or WIPS, as we like to call it. Uh, WIPS is co-host of this conference, along with the Spires Wausau Hospital Bioethics Committee. The Community Foundation of North Central Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Institute for the Humanities, and YCEL Research Institute provided enough money for us to make this event free and open to the public. Those of you who wish to receive continuing education units or continuing medical education or continuing legal education should be sure to sign up at the registration desk outside the doors. Um, please pick up and drop off an evaluation form. It's this green form here, and if you're looking to get continuing education credit, you'd be sure to fill out the shaded part so that uh, we can send you your certificate and you can have um, credit for having participated in this event. Um, first, let me uh, tell you a little something about our distinguished guests tonight. Then I'll say a little something about stem cell research and the kind of ethical and public <coughs> policy issues that it raises. Each of our speakers will then make a presentation and we'll finish up with some of your questions. Student ambassadors will walk the aisles with microphones so that you can be heard. The conversation will continue on Thursday afternoon at five o'clock on Wisconsin Public Radio Program Route 51 where I will be a guest of Glenn Moberg and my friend and colleague, Frank Lezinski, the chair of the Wausau Spiros Bioethics Committee will join us. First, let me thank Dr. Clive Svensson and Dr. John Oderico, both of the University of Wisconsin Madison School of Medicine and Public Health for their informative and up-to-date report this afternoon at the Westwood Center on stem cell treatments for Parkinson's disease and diabetes. If you missed the afternoon session, it will be rebroadcast endlessly on public television access over the next couple of weeks. We are fortunate tonight to have three of the most influential voices in the country on a topic that is of great personal and moral concern to the people of Wisconsin. Cynthia Cohen is one of the founders of the field of bioethics and the author of over 150 in highly influential papers and books, including in 2007, the magisterial overview of the topic of stem cell research entitled, Renewing the Stuff of Life. She received her PhD from Columbia and her JD from Michigan, and currently a senior research fellow at the Kennedy Institute of Ethics in Washington, DC. Dr. Cohen will provide an overview of the ethical issues stem cell research raises and indicate how recent scientific breakthroughs, including those at UW-Madison just a few months ago, changed the character of the debate. I must also say that Cynthia Cohen is one of the most gracious and generous people I've ever had the opportunity to work with. Um, here she is in Wausau, Wisconsin, when the cherry blossoms are blooming in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Alta Chara is a professor in the School of Law in the Department of Medical History and Bioethics at UW-Madison. Alta Chara served on President Clinton's National Bioethics Advisory Board and co-chairs the National Academy of Sciences Embryonic Stem Cell Research Advisory Commission. She heads up the Working Group for Ethics at the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine and is on the boards of Lots and lots of public and private institutions which have a special interest in stem cell research. Altachara was besieged by requests to come and speak, and I'm delighted that she accepted uh, our invitation to come to Wausau, Wisconsin tonight. Thank you so much. Um, if you read the New England Journal of Medicine, which may not be nighttime reading for most of us, but she uh, is, uh, has papers which occur regularly in that uh, distinguished journal, as well as many others, including the Stanford Law 
and, and policy review. And I'm, it was a paper that Alta published many years ago in that journal that got me thinking about stem cell research and the, uh, the nature of the embryo. It was entitled Hunting for the Snark, uh, in which she argued that the attempt to determine the moral status of the human embryo was to enter an Alice in Wonderland world of reflecting mirrors, and that we should try and, and find a political exit. Um, maybe she'll be our guide tonight. Tell us how to escape from what seems to be an interminable public controversy. And, and finally, my fellow professor and new good friend, Patrick Lee, uh, is one of the most influential proponents of the natural law perspective on embryo research. Professor Lee received his PhD here in Wisconsin at Marquette. He is currently the director of the Bioethics Center at Franciscan University of Steubenville. Dr. Lee is the author of Abortion and Unborn Human Life, a sophisticated review of the metaphysics of human development. Professor Lee articulates the central ethical concern of many who are opposed to embryonic stem cell research. This is research that destroys or puts at risk early embryos. Let me tell you a little something about what stem cells are and the kinds of ethical issues that they raise. Stem cells are cells that can divide into two cells. One, another stem cell. The other, a cell that could give rise to neurons or heart muscle or blood or other parts of the body. Our adult stem cells help to heal by splitting off new skin, new blood, other tissues. But some parts of our body do not have adult stem cells with this healing power. And as we grow older, those adult stem cells that we have become fewer in number and less potent. We don't heal as easily as we used to. Stem cell research aims to discover how certain kinds of stem cells can split into cells of those parts of the body that don't heal so easily. The heart, the pancreas, the spinal cord, the eyes, the brain. If these cells the pluripotent cells are able to become any part of the body. If these cells could be isolated and induced to split off into pancreatic or neural or cardiac cells, we might be able to use those tissue, tissues to treat and in the future perhaps even cure terrible diseases like diabetes and Parkinson's disease, heart disease, spinal cord injury, retinal blindness. Study of these stem cells could help us to understand degenerative diseases and to find new drugs that, and ways to prevent their onset. Cancer, for example, seems to be a form of uncontrolled cell division, the evil twin of stem cells. If we can understand how stem cells work, we may learn how to prevent or even treat, or, or treat cancer. Stem cell research is basic science. We just don't know where it will lead. Many scientists believe that stem cell research could usher in a whole new age of medicine. As important in its own way as antibiotics and vaccination were for the control of infectious disease. So where do these pluripotent stem cells come from? The most readily and best understood source is from the inner cell mass of an embryo between one and two weeks old. Stem cells also are found in some of the tissues of adults in an umbilical cord blood. And it may be possible to reprogram ordinary cells, skin cells, to become pluripotent cells which are functionally identical to embryonic stem cells. For some conditions, those adult stem cells or cord blood cells and maybe the induced pluripotent cells, which were just discovered uh, a few months ago at UW-Madison and at the University of Tokyo, maybe those will be the most effective pathways to regenerative medicine. For other conditions, embryonic stem cells may be the best hope for a cure, or at least for effective medical management. Embryonic stem cell research is an unparalleled opportunity to understand human development when all goes well and when it doesn't. 
all forms of medical research are beset by moral perplexity. But embryonic stem cell research poses a special kind of moral risk. In order to isolate those pluripotent embryonic stem cells, it is necessary to destroy an embryo. People who believe that human life begins at fertilization when sperm and ova combine think that this is a one-week-old child with the same right not to be killed in a medical experiment as you or I. If they are right, embryonic stem cell research should be halted. Regardless of the benefit that uh, this might provide to other people, no one wants to conduct research that intentionally kills children. The disagreement is about whether or not an early embryo is a child. It didn't used to matter much when life began. Um, fertilization was close enough. But now, with cures for terrible diseases hanging in the balance, it's worth our while to take a closer look. A great deal has been learned in the last 30 years since in vitro fertilization brought the embryo out of the darkness of the womb and into the bright lights of a laboratory. You may, you may think that if there are less morally perilous ways to conduct stem cell research, then we should focus upon those ways and leave the embryos alone. But if a weak old embryo is not the same thing as a child, then calling a halt to embryonic stem cell research could unnecessarily deprive people who now suffer from degenerative diseases of treatments that might return them to a healthy life. We just don't know at this time which form of stem cell therapy will be most effective for diseases such as diabetes and Parkinson's disease and others. The ethical issue of the moral status of the embryo has to be faced squarely. At least that's what I think. Alta may have a somewhat different perspective on that. It seems to me that if early embryos are children, they must be protected. If early embryos are not children, then treating them as if they were needlessly puts many of our fellow citizens at risk of disability and early death. It may be, for example, that early embryos and fetuses are not the same thing, that one could be pro-life on the abortion issue but not pro-life on the stem cell issue. Pro-life senators such as Arlen Specter, Orrin Hess, Trent Lott, John McCain, came to a conclusion like this after studying the issue. Cynthia Cohen will guide us through the reasoning that led these pu public figures and others, including Senators Clinton and, senators, and Senator Obama, to conclude that embryonic stem cell research does not lead to the killing of a child. Many other thoughtful people, such as Senators uh, Norm Coleman of Minnesota and Sam Brownback from my native Kansas and Patrick Lee sitting up on the stage, uh, see a weak old embryo as the first stage in the life of a child, a research that destroys the life of that child as a serious moral evil. Clearly there is room for reasonable disagreement on this issue, but how can a democratic society demonstrate respect for the sincerely held moral judgments of all of its citizens. Should state or national governments prohibit embryonic stem cell research as contrary to the sanctity of life? Should public funds be withheld from this research as a sign of respect for those who believe that life begins at conception? Could the federal government set up a fair procedure to regulate uh, what may well become a multi-billion dollar industry or should the government just stay out of it and, and let academic, healthcare, religious, and private sector institutions sort this all out? These are the questions. For the answers, join me in welcoming Cynthia Cohen, Altichara, and Patrick Lee.